later on to show you the feel of the city, the business in the city as we go by this day that is a public holiday. Back to you, Romeo Busiku in the studios. My brother Stephen Mbide, he is reporting live on the traffic update, trying to let you know some of the areas you should be uh, going to as far as the traffic is concerned, because we do know some roads have, be, have been condoned off. John Babiha Road is largely closed <coughs> off. The members of the public, only dignitaries, shall be using that road as the Via to uh, Hotel Africano, from which they'll be making their way uh, to Kololo Airstrip in that regard for the inauguration ceremony for President Yuri Kaguta Museveni. And now, um, some, so many achievements have been garnered under the NRM government. That is no doubt, even though there are insufficiencies we can talk about. Imagine having one university public in 1986. Fast forward in 2021, we are talking about 49 universities, more than 10, belonging to the government and the rest being privately owned. But the government has put in place a conducive environment through which learning has actually developed in this country of ours, Uganda. Between 1986 and 1995, learners were only studying for 2.5 years. That was how long a young people stayed in school. But now, under President Jerry Museveni, we're talking about six years. That's the least a number of years that uh, young learners spend in a school setting. You only had 80 companies in 1986. Now we can boast about 4,920 or plus um, companies in this their country of ours, the part of Africa. In 1986, we could only boast about 50 mega watts of electricity, 150, yes, megawatts of electricity. Now we are talking about 1,250 megawatts of electricity and we are only using half of that electricity. The bad news is that we are paying for the unused electricity and that's the biggest uh, nick in this country that well, that's what we need to resolve in that regard. So, so many things have been, you know, coming about, but we also have some little bit of achievements that have been achieved under the NRM government. I have Mike Sabalu, he is a former Iyala MP and also an NRM NRM Carter. We are going to be unpacking some of the achievements under the NRM. What are those insufficiencies that made it hard to achieve under the NRM? And what should we expect uh, during this inauguration ceremony today? Yes, we also have uh, opposition members who have been incarcerated. What does Mike Sebalu think about that? Is that um, democratic in a country like Uganda? Yes, he's here. Mike Sebalu, very good morning. Yeah, good morning, my brother Vosiku. All right, we do have a swearing in on our hands. It is President Museveni's inauguration, the sixth elective term. Um, just give, get us through the modalities of what we should expect as we veer into this swearing in event. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, all our viewers and those that are following us on various platforms. Uh, that uh, are associated. Do you allow me to? Please, it's stifling your ability to speak. <clears throat> um, Good morning to all our viewers and all those that are following this program on uh, social media platforms associated with this media house. I wish you a very eventful and exciting and interesting mm. uh, swearing in ceremony, Indeed. Uh, which will commence uh, soon or shortly. Uh, it is a day that we are going to have uh, the winning candidate in the recently concluded presidential elections uh, take oath uh, to lead and begin a new tour of duty as the president of the Republic of Uganda. So I would like to congratulate him. I would like to congratulate all the participants in the race. And I would like to congratulate Ugandans who used their civic responsibility to choose a leader as mandated by the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. So today at Kololo, we are going to have this function. Usually it is a big uh, fanfare with millions of people in attendance. Uh, but because of the threat and the disruption of COVID-19, uh, the attendance and participation has been limited to about 4,000 invitees uh, in the various categories. We have uh, foreign delegations uh, that are led by heads of state and governments and many of them have already arrived in the country. Uh, that is something good to write home about. The fact that we have COVID and you can have heads of state and many delegations turning up physically, uh, that is an expression of goodwill and solidarity and it is a vote of confidence mm -hmm. uh, to, 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 to Uganda. So we are, we are very appreciative and ever thankful to those that have come physically. 
And we also have uh, a wide range of invitations made to uh, the national constituency uh, that include uh, ministers, that include members of parliament, members of parliament elect. It includes delegations from uh, districts. Uh, we have the business community. And at the party level, you have the central executive committee. So it is uh, a representative sample, Indeed. literally. Uh, each section of our society and community uh, was uh, represented. We also have the mm. business and corporate world invited. So they will definitely be there, but um, all the invitees, mm. because of the COVID-19 threats, have been subjected to COVID-19 tests. Okay. So that is to ensure and guarantee safety, health mm. and safety uh, at the event and at the venue. And on top of that, strict adherence to standard operating procedures is going to be ensured. You know, sanitization, mm. face masks, and the seating uh, arrangement that takes into account social distancing, uh, and the invitees are going to sit in their clusters of 200 per cluster. So a lot of uh, interest has been put in terms of ensuring health and safety. So the invited guests will definitely arrive in mm. order of protocol. The general public will arrive. Those invited in that category will arrive first. I guess many of them are already on the way. Then you get to the heads of state, visiting heads of state. And then you will get uh, the, the host, uh, who is also the head of state and president-elect, mm. uh, being ushered at the venue. And uh, the entire proceedings of the day are going to be presided over by the Chief Justice, mm. uh, definitely assisted by the Electoral Commission, who have to present uh, the President-elect and the organizing committee headed by mm. uh, the, the, the Minister in charge of the Presidency in terms of uh, all the arrangements. So I think it, it, it is something that is already so after Indeed. that. You'll have prayers, like uh, it's important on a day like mm. that to have prayers. Uh, then the, 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 the gathering will be formally constituted uh, by the Chief Justice. And the candidate will be presented by the Chairman Electoral Commission. Mm. And then the swearing ceremony uh, commences and uh, speeches. All right. I think, in brief, that will be... Mike Sevalu like acquainting us with the modalities of this swearing in uh, event or the inauguration ceremony that is taking center stage today, May 12th. But let's also unpack uh, some of the achievements that have come about during President Museveni's tenure. We are now talking about 35 years. When he, ex uh, when he elapses this tenure, we, are we shall be talking about 40 years. Let's talk about some of the achievements the NRM has garnered under President Yuri Kaguta Museveni from 1986. Yeah, I think for someone to appreciate the achievements uh, registered under President Museven, one then needs to appreciate uh, what situation there was mm. at the time uh, President Museven took uh, charge of leadership of this country. Uh, in terms of development, the country mm. had really degenerated to levels that uh, we hardly had any 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 uh, items being produced here. The economy was in shambles. Uh, security was definitely compromised. There was no security. Mm. Uh, many sectors were struggling because of uh, the environment mm. uh, that was pertaining at the time. Uh, in terms of real good narrative, mm. the country had literally gone to a bit of negative. Uh, and uh, the first preoccupation of, of the president and the government was to get the government back to normalcy. Constitutionalism. Uh, your constitutionalism, democracy, the, the economy. So when you move, because I always hear people attribute this, but you've not moved fast enough. But when you move from negative to zero, mm. you're making progress because mm. the economy was not there. So you had to engage in rehabilitation and reconstruction. When you're dealing with that, you are simply going back to uh, the, 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 the normal level. Mm -hmm. And then you start talking of uh, development. So there was that time when reconstruction and rehabilitation was being undertaken. There was that time when the security was still a problem. Mm -hmm. The entire country was not peaceful. The entire country was not secure. Uh, they were in the north 
took quite a bit toll of that time. There was all that. So we now talk about a 100% secured country. We now talk about uh, peace prevailing in the country. Mm. We are now talking about development in the social sector, in the economy. We are now talking about a country which is a net recipient of refugees. Mm -hmm. At one point, Uganda was a net exporter of refugees. Mm -hmm. But when you hear that uh, we are one of the world leading uh, nations in terms mm -hmm. of hosting refugees, and with the model refugee policy, which is being replicated literally uh, around the world, mm. then you see that there is something good to write home about. This is a when you look mm. at infrastructure, yes. definitely we had serious challenges mm. there. A lot of investment has been put in infrastructure development. So there is a lot. 1,000 kilometers in 1986, now we are boasting about 6,000 kilometers of paved roads. Good, good, good. Yes, but then, yes, largely the NRM wrote about the um, era of constitutionalism, expansion of the development and so forth, but we've noticed a shrinking political space, especially when it comes to political inclusion. You have a swearing in uh, the event that is taking center stage today, but then opposition candidates, like former uh, presidential candidate, retired Colonel Kiza Besije, his home was surrounded, even though he's out of the country. Uh, Robert Chagro the new president is also having his house cordoned off by members of security. Isn't that a shrinking political space? And what is compounding most of this, what we are seeing? Would you say that it is very undemocratic, what we are seeing right now? I, I think we need to appreciate that in perspective. Mm. And uh, the reason that you need to expect in perspective is that how are the political actors mm. managing themselves at this point in time? Mm. Uh, you'll appreciate that uh, we had 11 candidates mm. and uh, to my recollection from your observation not mm. all of them have been confined in one way or another mm. Mugisha Muntu had the Kalembe she's just been mm. making Katumba. our comment Katumba we had so we, we had Nobat Mao mm. we had uh, uh, Geno Geno mm. uh, we, we, we had quite a number mm. of uh, participants so when you get, like you've mentioned, the two mm. uh, in finding themselves in such a situation, then we need to unpack wh what is it, why is it so. Mm. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, we need to appreciate that uh, when we participate in the electoral processes, uh, we may win, we may not win. Mm. So if we are good participants mm. in an electoral process, we should be able to appreciate the outcome. This is, what the, academ this is what the academics are saying. You have an associate professor at Macquarie University School of Social Sciences, uh, Don uh, William Mohumuza. Yes, he actually says that uh, President Museveni's determination to stay in or retain power in Uganda has led to so many uh, undemocratic activities. He also says that Uganda is in a pseudo-democratic dispensation. Yeah, I, I respect him for his views, but I don't think, I don't share mm. uh, that viewpoint because uh, what pertains in Uganda is that uh, you, 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 are, you assume office mm. uh, through a democratic process uh, and that can only be guaranteed and given by the population of Uganda. Mm. Uh, that's why we've had elections uh, time and again regularly. Mm. There was a time in this country when elections were a very rare occurrence. Mm. But right now, every after five years, we have electoral processes. Mm. Uh, the mandate of determining who is going to lead Ugandans is vested within the population. Mm. And the population has always done that. And uh, President Museveni has always uh, uh, put himself before the population to give him mandate to lead. Mm -hmm. So the elections were held. Uh, whoever wanted to participate was free to participate. Mm. And when people do choose the leader that they choose, then we are under obligation to respect the view and the decision 
and the choice of the people. Is that why we've been seeing uh, President Museveni's narrative shift when it comes to retirement? Because in 1980, during a fundraising for the Uganda Patriotic Movement, President Museveni came out and said, Africa's problem are leaders who cling on to power against the wishes of the masses. 1986, he reiterated the same when he was swearing in, uh, but then he also said he would only lead for four years. But he extended that by, by four more years and two more years until the 1996 election. He also spoke to New Vision 2001 and told them in 2006 he was not running. But then we saw the removal of the time limits that allowed him to run again. And uh, in 2012, when we reached out to him, he said, you know what, when I clock 75, I'm not even talk going to talk about removal of age limit and so forth, Article 102B, I'm going to retire. Because scientifically, President Museveni thought like he might not have the vigor, the strength to lead the country um, after he clocks 75. But uh, right now, President Museveni is 76 years. You have uh, position uh, politicians who are saying he might be a weaker president moving forward in the next five tenure. Do you believe so to be the case that President Museveni will be a weaker president because of his age? No, I, I think uh, the issue of age uh, is something that uh, we need to appreciate in, 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 in perspective. Mm. Yeah, you can be weak in terms of physical strength, mm. but I think uh, leadership is more than physical strength. Mm. Uh, because you have a, a president in the United States mm. who is just coming in mm. at a much higher age than Joe that. Biden. So if mm. Joe Biden is just joining, mm. is just beginning his tour of duty as a leader, mm. then that demystifies the whole notion of age being a factor Indeed. in limiting leadership. So mm. I, I think let's look at what it is that a leader can do what it is that a leader is capable of. Mm. Uh, biology in terms of age may be an issue, but ideology in mm. terms of ideas, mm. in terms of conceptualization, in cognitive terms of guidance, mm. cognitive abilities mm. is something we need to look at. But also the idea of um, mouth party is something we need to appreciate because uh, you may be an individual, uh, you may have your ideas, but at the end of the day, you must subordinate yourself to the party and its uh, wishes and its considerations. Mm -hmm. And the NRM party may look around and it is still uh, has confidence in a leader. Mm -hmm. So you simply cannot wish it away when the party feels mm -hmm. that that is a winning candidate and that is someone okay. who can uh, uh, champion mm -hmm. the ideology and the agenda of the party. Mr. Mike Zavallo is an NRM cadre and he's also a former EALA MP. We are unpacking the achievements of President Yuri Museveni as he actually gets sworn in today. That is May 12th. It's the inauguration ceremony that shall give President Museveni a sixth elective term until 2026 when we shall be having another presidential election. Now, uh, Mike Zavallo did talk about uh, the NRM allowing it for having brought about multi-party dispensation, but I'm sure uh, someone would beg to disagree or to defer, and that is the associate director, um, Associate Ed Executive Director for the African Institute on Strategic Studies. That's none other than Mr. Godbert Mushabe. He is here with us and he shall be joining us after this breather. We'll be right back.